we're riding down the gondola with Adrian Florani, former NASA engineer and owner of Flow Ski. That's flowski.com. He's going to explain a little bit about how the ski works. I did get to test it today, and it's a great ski. And so, go ahead, Adrian, tell us about it. I also taught skiing at Heavenly Valley, and I taught skiing at uh, Vail for quite a while. And knowing what I know, if you want to be a good skier fast, you need to take a lesson, and then that's not even good enough. So, technology being what it is, I developed a ski that when you did the right moves it would perform quickly and you could advance to the next level of skiing. And that's done with the technology that I invented with here's a this is a 150 ski. <laughs> and uh, this is kind of the more popular ski because it does everything for all people. Uh, starting off if you look at the front here. That's a hydrodynamic stabilizer. Hydro because it's liquid dynamic because it works when the ski is going fast and stabilizing is what it does so as the ski hits bump the oil splashes the BBs slam up into the oil the air compresses into a pocket here and it takes all the vibration chatter out of the tip of the ski the ski feels like it's glued down at the front yeah I noticed that today when I was skiing and yeah. uh, as rough as it was with uh, all the soft snow it really held onto the onto the surface of the snow yeah so when the ski is holding down solid here when you tip it on edge it's more reactive to go into the turn because skis are designed by how wide they are here and narrow and how wide they are here is how they turn <laughs> so that makes the ski carve harder it makes it faster because it doesn't absorb it. the, the ski is not bouncing so it's traveling faster um, then as you go further, look further down, you say, wow, well, here's a binding. This looks like it's further back on the ski, and it is. Because when you have a stabilizer that's this solid, you can move the binding back further on the ski without the ski coming up. And that gives you a shorter tail. The distance from your heel to here is very short. Which is really cool, because you could, you could do wheelies on the tail. You're not going to hurt your ACL when you fall. You're not going to rip your knee out. Because when, they, when you fall back on this ski, because it's curved, you fall back on the ski and twist, it pivots. No ACL tear. Ski pivots, not your knee. You don't want your knee to pivot. It wasn't designed to pivot that way. Yeah, mine did that twice and two operations later. And that's thousands of dollars. Look how many skis you could buy. Yeah, 30,000 each. Yeah, I think skis, <laughs> skis are like, it's real cheap. Let's look at it like insurance policy for ACL injury. <laughs> That's good. For 1055 you get no ACL injuries and you ski anywhere on the mountain. But yeah, here's another uh, feature. If you notice that the ski is mounted only in two real small area like this you're standing on, like five centimeters. The rest is cut away. So what that means is if I bend forward in my boot, the front of the ski bends show you here. See how it bends? Yes. That creates a rocker by bending forward in the boot. So you have a rocker tip. But when that ski is bent in a rocker and you tip it, it turns that direction of the car. Same with the tail. So you have a mechanical rocker here and you have also a built-in rocker on this model. And that's to prevent people from getting in lockout, getting in trouble with tree skiing where they can't turn. The snow gets heavy enough and thick enough, and you're on regular skis, you may not be able to make that turn when the tree is going fast. Yeah. This ski, you come back on it, and it pre prevents a pivot point, you're going to turn. You're not going to get into lockout. Lockout is when the ski is locked and going straight and it won't turn. And that's primarily when you get too far back on the tails on a normal ski. Being higher also, see so we're way higher off the edge of this riser. That gives the skier a lot more power and leverage to bring the ski over on its edge. This ski is pretty wide under the bottom, it's 85. And it takes a lot of pressure on your knees to roll the 85 over. But when you're mounted up in the air like this, one inch, 
more leverage you have, you can roll the ski over. That 85 feels like a 67 in a way, like a slalom ski. So you could actually turn this like a slalom ski. It has a, has a side cut radius. This 150 has a side cut radius of eight and a half meters. That's extreme solid with carving ski. But generally those aren't stable at high speed, but so you can take a extreme side cut key, put a ski, put a dampener on it, and it'll be stable like it was a GS ski. And you have you have all the maneuverabilities of slalom and a trick ski. People that call it a trick ski or snow blade or something that turns like a roller blade or a roller skate. That's what this will do as you tip it and apply pressure, you create this arc of the ski and it follows that arc, so it's like a roller blade. Like roller skates, when you get forward on a like four wheels, you get forward on four wheels, they pivot, and then you roll the skate and it turns like a roller skate. So that gives you this pure carving effect. Not to mention that you have a binding position that can be moved several places on the ski. So with these four bolts come out, and there's a position forward for speed, all mountain, and then back for deep powder. Or it could be for, for a lady who has a, someone with a real small boot, you could just move it back and it would be like a person in all mountain position. Also, the big thing in ski boot fitting is getting your stance, getting the cant right. So your, your skis are flat when you're skiing. They're not, one, one ski's not like this or the like this. Depends on your legs and your boat leg. With this ski, you're able to adjust it yourself with some coins in your pocket, a little tool comes with it. To loosen these screws and put a coin in here. This one's a quarter. And that tips the, the riser this way, the whole platform. That gives me two and a half degrees of can, which is a nice solid can. Gives me a really edge to edge in moguls, a real quick edge. You don't have to move it as much to get your edge more responsive, like for smaller skiing. If I were to do downhill skiing, hey, I could take it out or powder skiing, I don't need it. Because the ski is going to go like crazy when it gets into the deeper stuff when you're going faster, so you can take it out. Or some people put in a dime, a little less, just a little bit less. Uh, ski also has a lot of camber in it. If you can see, the camber, camber is like a leaf spring, you know, in a car? Yeah. So this is like a leaf spring, and how do you get a spring to be springy? You know, it's a ski, I use solid bamboo like a hardwood floor. So the ski is wrapped in fiberglass around a hard, solid bamboo floorboard, basically, machine with a computer. If anybody knows anything about bamboo, it <laughs> used to be how we had fly, 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 uh, fly rods. Fly rods were made out of bamboo because they had so much action. This ski has that much action. It, when you compress it and release it, it gives you back in the energy, 80, 90% of the energy you put in. Any other ski, it, you're lucky to get 70, 60 percent return out of it. Normal birch or poplar that they oh. use in other skis. How long have you been working on the ski? Long time. It was a lot of a lot of development to get the edges, the shape right, the binding position, the dampener, and then trying to figure out how to make it mass production where what, where they won't break. The ski is guaranteed for life. You can't break it. Oh yeah, I know. It's <laughs> on on the website. Yeah. So how do people buy these if they're interested? If they go to flowskis.com, F-L-O-S-K-I-S.com, look at the different skis, look at the videos, comparison chart, we make three different models. And you pretty much look at that, you'll know what model you'd like to have. It ranges from nine-year-olds, I'm 60-something, and it's good for me. I'm anywhere from 65 pounds to 300 pounds skier. Right. Well, hey, thanks for your time. and. Um, Thanks for letting me uh, ski the ski this weekend. Uh, it's June 5th, 2011. We're here on Aspen Mountain. Uh, we reopened for summer skiing. And uh, thanks again. Have a good day.